All right, Gary, here we are again, talking records. Oh, it was, it was fun super, last it was time. Actually, it was actually super fun going through that stuff. So, yeah, so anyway, we've got Steve over here who's going to pick out a few records for us as we so we can talk. And just got to throw in a little shout-out for the company that actually pays for all my crazy video ideas whenever we do these, which is Audiomover, audiomover.com. If you have old audio and videotapes and you want to convert them to digital, which you need to do because they deteriorate. Do you have old audio video? Do you have like cassette tapes? You know what? Uh, when I moved to Hawaii, I had yeah. like 400 tapes. Really? Uh, audio tapes? I had audio tapes. Okay. Because, I mean, back pre Apple's iTunes and, I mean, even pre Walkman, right? How, how did you get your music mobily? Oh, yeah. Even on your Walkman. I mean, your Walkman, you had your Walkman, cassette. Walkman, you had to have your cassette. So yeah. if I go on a road trip, I have to pre-pick out what mu- what music I'm going to bring with. So Days can, ahead of time. Day, you know, I, I and make your mix. Make even. My, or even make a mixtape. Um, so, yeah. So I held on to a lot of stuff because as things converted to CD, you know, and then digital, right, media, there was a lot of stuff I had that wasn't around isn't around um and so i held them i held on to them way to some way longer than a lot of people would have and Mm. i think at some point when we moved to hawaii we purged a lot of stuff and that was one of the things that i was already in hawaii my wife had that and some guys like oh my gosh this is like an amazing collection She's like, name your price. <laughs> oh, really? That's, yeah, interesting. That's, that's where that kind of went. But it was all right, you know, because sometimes I hold on to things a little bit. And, you know, I'm not a hoarder or anything like, <laughs> like that. But uh, that kind of opened up my world to the digital age of, yeah. okay, Walkman, iTunes, all the modern stuff. And, you know, there's some things that, that I've, over the years, have wanted. Um, that either recently became available or over time when they do, you know, maybe people's rights and who owns it and who's, you know. But, uh, yeah, I had plenty of cassette tapes stashed well, away everywhere. Well, what's interesting is, you know, of course we had the cassettes that we would buy that would have music like you're talking about. The, the thing that was interesting back then is people using them for just to record their own stuff on. And this stuff that, you know, as we're talking about Audio Mover, the thing that comes into Audio Mover all the time are these, weirdly enough, churches. More, pro- well, I don't know if they're more than anything, but it's churches and government agencies and, and, and a lot of people that just have recorded like, family stuff. Right. You know, just their, their birthday parties, believe it or not, you know, and, and uh, piano recitals. And interviews with grandparents. Oh my gosh, we, that so much of that stuff comes in, and and but yeah, they get these uh, big orders from from churches where they'll get a couple thousand tapes sent in that they want converted. And so these are all these kind of one of a kind, yeah. irreplaceable no, think- things. So it was, it was an interesting format because because of that that nature that you could you yeah, could do you that can, with it. I mean, you think you got back in the day, yeah, that was. Uh, throw the cassette in hit record you can listen to yourself i mean my mother used to play um me speaking spanish when i was like two three years old and i had this accent and i spoke obviously in a much higher pitch um (laughs) but i mean it's like crazy you know because you listen to it and and it was even as a teenager like i don't want to listen to that but just the how easy you could capture those sounds Mm -hmm. things or Hey, you know, if you're a musician or a singer, you can right. hit record, and that's how you would audition. You didn't have TikTok or something that you can just kind of videotape. I mean, that was cutting edge at the time. Yeah, tapes, cassette tapes. Yeah, and that was yeah. That's so, and and so there's a lot of people still that have thousands of thousands. So anyway, that's the the company that pays a lot of the bills here that enables us to do this is Audio Mover, AudioMover.com. So if you have old audio videotapes that you need converted into digital, go to audiomover.com and you can get an order started there. For people that are our age, they the nostalgia of walking through a record store and seeing, yeah. you know, or the launch date of you knew X album's gonna be released wasn't it like Tuesdays? How do I mean how do we remember I, I used that? to get excited to right. tell people I bought this on the day it was released. Right. I mean yeah. 
you'd go ready. and you'd go see that and you'd go through the store and then just the the searching like what's cool or what cool album cover is going to pique my interest that i might just look you know pull it up and look at it and be like look i got a good back. feeling about this, this one. one might be good and then you know you're picking something out that's like terrible. I do that all the time. You know, I have, I have so many duds, and and a, and a lot of records that I bought that ended up being yeah, just I fantastic. Mean, I, I loved. I, yeah, and you know, as the years changed, you know, obviously you would go through the CDs, but the the, the records. I mean, uh, Boise, which I lived for 20 years, they have the. It's called the Record Exchange. It's on the corner. Um, dude, I could spend hours there and it's just the feeling of nostalgia holding something up like we're going to do now with yeah. the old records um there's nothing like it for our generation that was definitely into music because you'd be just that would be just a huge that was a part of our life is what you'd go what or what would you go do you'd go to the music go store, the store and you could just kill time painless you're out of trouble you just I spent hours, I would literally spend hours. Yeah. Just going through records, looking at the same record I'd looked at 50 times. And you and same thing, I'd look at them real. But you know, it and, and I don't poo-poo modern technology because it's today I way prefer the ease and uh, everything and whatever. The quality, right? I mean But but you do miss out on something when you don't have records. And 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 I've I've tried to explain this to people that it wasn't it's not today your connection with music is is all it's mostly hearing and it's watching videos right but this was different because it was the it was the experience of going to the record store you you invested time into finding that thing you you you'd sit and look and study like you said and then you'd you'd buy it you'd literally have to go to a counter give the guy money leave get back to your house and then listen to and it. Then, because nobody did the pre-playing, like some, like the record exchange in, in Boise. You can take it out. They have a little record player. You can kind of test it out. Okay, this is pretty cool. Okay, I never heard this. Or, yeah, I didn't have really, at least not with that I knew back then that you could no, sample it. Unless you heard it on right? the radio. Yeah. Oh, that was the, I know that the was one the best track thing sounds you, pretty yeah, good. That sounds like a good song. But, I did. but there is a, the other piece I think that, you know, I mean, here we are post-COVID, right? Nobody's been socializing for a year. But going to the record store was a tremendous social component because you're looking through your rock or pop or disco or rap or whatever was out, right? Um, and you're looking at a guy across the aisle, you know, that's searching through the same kind. You find anything good over there? Yeah. <laughs> Hey Robert, you, and you start you talking. You start talking about thing, different you know, songs. Best. You ever heard this one? You know, and then then the conversations start about, dude, this is a great album. Yeah. You know, I know you've never heard of these guys, right? but this Word is really mouth. good stuff. I mean, it would be. I mean, I don't want to say it's it was the same. Like if you remember back when we used to go to the video store, right? And you'd be, is this movie any good, man? You know, it was the same with the records. Mm -hmm. You'd be looking through and you'd be seeing something, or is this band any cool? I don't know, Crocus. I don't know, man. They, yeah, and the cute girl yeah. at the counter would know something right. about some of the records. You know, we sell a bunch of that one or whatever, and you'd get to know that. I mean, it was it was you're yeah, right. That, I never even thought about the social component. Yeah, because because where I was going to go with this is you get home and you have this tactile experience because it felt a certain way right. as you pulled it out and you touched it and, and it had a smell associated yeah, with the it. The plastic or the the vinyl coming the out of the thing. thing man. It was I mean, this, think it was about this all those senses that we don't get. I mean, it, and I, I, I agree with you. We don't have that today our younger generation our kids they don't have that today you know it was really kind of a yeah. all encompassing experience to go out and get a record i mean it's pretty easy now you get on your phone and you're like download do you accept Boop. bought it charged it yeah it's downloaded in like 30 seconds and it's usually and you're usually at least for me i'm buying a song this, this was a commitment because you're basically buying 10 songs and, and you, you don't might know what's know, coming. You might know one. Yeah, you right. know, I've heard one song and I'm guessing that this album's good. Right. And you don't know. And then it's like trying and then there's those. And then and sometimes you'd get invested like, I want to like this so bad because right. I spent eight bucks on this. Yeah. And so you'd be <laughs> playing and you go, I'm going to listen to that album again and give it another chance because it's got to be better than I yeah. think it was. Oh, and, I, uh, and that was the oh thing. Gosh, I mean, yeah. it's not like you talk about just songs one at a time now. We're so used to, you know, modern day that way. But yeah. back then you were dropping the needle on track one and you're like, go. hey, I hope. <laughs> yeah. 
I hope these next five tracks, or uh, that was the other thing. Oh, we talked about tapes as well. I mean, you hit track one. It wasn't like I hit track two. You got to wait for the song to go all the way through. I mean, you got to learn all the songs, a whole side yeah. of an album, a whole side of that cassette tape. Um, yeah, it, it was, uh, again, I think definitely, I think artists then, or that the way the media was, you had to listen, or I think maybe you had to have stronger songs to have a, to keep somebody engaged. That was the or, idea. Or you'd fast forward all the way through. That was the idea. And, and they, and they would literally think through song orders too. Like which, which one's going first, what's second. And they had, they had tricks. Like, I think it was. The first song on the first side had to be a certain thing, and then the first song on the second side, where today that would be song number six. Right. But then, you, you, so they had to they had to figure out where they wanted. They needed it. They yeah, needed to pace it so a slow song happened right about here. And yeah, there I mean, was a pacing about that, to right? the album. I mean, because the because the way it was packaged, right? I mean, because yeah. if the rest of the album sucked, you could just fast forward and get to the other song on mm-hmm. the other side, flip the tape over, unless you were really cool, and you had the the tape deck that would. Do, do get the, to the other side and then turn around on its own. The auto reverse. No, that, that's, oh, the, yeah. that's for the rich kids, man. That was <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't for me. That's so funny. I you got like physical. forty of them in the other room at this point, but that's that's hysterical, right? So, right, so Steve's bringing a bringing a record up. Okay, this is a good one. I can tell by the back of it what it is. The, okay, so this this is one of the great rock albums of all time. I mean, I don't yeah, know no even doubt. how you beat it's, this. Uh, but this particular one, this one that we're looking at right here, has a story for me. That So what happened, this is this is really kind of funny. So I, I come from a pretty conservative family, okay? And and my, I remember one time I needed to go mow the grass, and I really didn't want to. And I, I can't remember exactly how this happened, but my mom said, I said, will you, go, will you buy me a record? If I mow the grass, and she says, "Okay," and I go, sure. "I said, will you not question it?" Because <laughs> I knew what I wanted. Right. And she goes, "Okay." My parents were strangely cool about this stuff, and, and so, so I mowed the grass, and we went over to Sound Warehouse. That was a record store at the time. It was over on Dry Creek and uh, I can't remember the, uh, a university in Denver, Colorado, and in, in Littleton, Colorado, sure. Centennial now. We drove over there and I walked right over to Iron Maiden and I grabbed this and I held it up and my mom goes, and I remember the look on her face, yeah. she goes, that, that one? Yeah. <laughs> said, that's you, it. You want this? And she, Conservative? Because I mean, this was, yeah, exactly. This was intense. And I remember even I felt like overwhelmed by this album cover. No, I mean, think about so, the era, right? Yeah. I mean, you have Eddie yep. on the cover who's... Let's just not kid ourselves. He's pretty menacing looking. <laughs> and you're talking... He's a corpse. 80 yeah. something, right? Uh, yep, holding fire. Right. And then you've got, obviously, you know, the satanic references. Yeah, yep. mom's freaking out going, what the hell you just pick up? <laughs> exactly. You know, my, my kid's all these, going all down these the drain figures here. figures burning down here like you're actually in hell. Right. I mean, that's what this, that's what this looks like here. Yeah, and I think I had a lot of friends... Uh, that were totally Iron Maiden fans, and you'd see them because the big marketing push was all this, like kids with T-shirts and stuff. Yep. Um, it was all over the place. And again, for me, growing up, as we talked about in the other episode, I was a big Kiss fan. So, you know, I kind of got the imagery and the things, but this was taking it a whole new level. This, this right here, yeah, was going way. That's over, the next yeah. step, especially because not only do you have this this cover. That has the the dead guy menacing, like you said, the fire and the hell and and the devil and all this other stuff. But then it has this thing called the right. number of the beast, and you well, go, "What, what, what the is heck that? is the number of the What's beast?" That? And then you realize this is a re- this is from the book of <laughs> Revelations in the Bible, and and it's specifically the number of the beast is six six six. Right. And you're like, "Oh my gosh, this is so." And I'm I'm what. 13, 12, something like yeah. that. We're, we're and, young, and you're listening to this, and mom's freaking out, and we're going straight to hell. Yeah, exactly. What's going on? But like I said, I got to hand it to my parents because they were really smart about this. They, they, I'm sure that they were in the other room going, oh, 
my gosh, what the heck is our kid getting into in the other room? And as, as I started listening to it, sure. and it sounds so intense and so oh, evil awesome. and whatever. It was it was awesome. You're right. Yeah. It's exactly so what it was. Awesome. Cause it's and especially to a teenage kid, a teenage boy, you're like, I mean, it was so awesome. Yeah. But my parents were my parents were just and I've talked to him about it since and they were they were kind of like you know we picked our battles we didn't want to because a lot of people especially when this stuff was coming out you'd see these parents and kids that would just start doing this they'd start fighting over it and you'd have these horrible things that would happen you know screaming matches and everything and my parents were just kind of let him do his thing whatever yeah no, and and I, and totally... I never I never rebelled I never went crazy or at least I don't think I did I was just this normal kid that listened to crazy music so you're saying we turned out okay we turned out okay somehow even <laughs> listen after to Maiden. listening to this music right so this album so i took this thing home because the only thing i had actually heard on this album was run to the hills and awesome and, track which is such a great song and bruce dickinson bruce dickinson this is his first album right. and so and i remember watching the video for run to the hills which was actually kind of funny you know, because they're playing live and you've got all this old footage of Cowboys and Indian movie, you know, right. the early silent movie stuff. And I remember, it's funny because I remember Bruce Dickinson was wearing blue jeans and they were rolled up at the bottom. They were cuffed. And I remember looking at that going, that's, I guess that's cool. And I didn't realize it. Mm. I remember thinking that. And then it wasn't until a couple of years ago or about a year ago when I read his his autobiography and actually talked about the fact that his pants were just too long because he's a short guy. So he just rolled them up. Right, and I thought no, no oh. fashion statement. Yeah, it wasn't at all. It's not because he's British or anything. I, exactly. <laughs> yet, yet it was such an impactful to me that I saw this guy with his rolled up pants. Like Dude, that must oh, be the cool. That's got to be the cool thing now. So, and it was Bruce Dickinson. This is his first album. Uh, the the singer Paul Diano was on the first two, which was Iron Maiden and Killers. Right. And then you know you hear Steve Harris tell the story. I think it's Steve Harris. He just kind of had this attitude, like I wanted to take the band a little just further yeah. than Paul could take us. And so then they found Bruce Dickinson, who was in a band called Samson. And then Bruce, you know, came in and joined the band, and then he just took him over the top. You know, he was so, and he had the, he had that, the, he had that voice and that uh, that look. And you'd never know that the guy was just like five and a half feet tall because he looked bigger than life in that video. Just this. Yeah. If, dude. if Bruce is taller and you're watching this, um, <laughs> you can. Type in or correct <laughs> However, us. Whatever the correct height five, is. Five. But if you look at the if you look at the pictures of the band together, yeah, he's and they're all just short. a bunch of short British guys, right. you know. And and uh, he but he was a he's a small dude. But what a voice! I mean, the guy was incredible. So Run to the Hills was amazing. But then so I put the record on. I'd never. That's the only song I'd heard. And I put the first one on. I put on the Number of the Beast, the song. And how does it start? Woe to you, O Earth and Sea. And it sounds like Vincent Price. Right. And they're re reading from the Bible. You know, and so I'm instantly like, you know, and I'm like, this is the most evil thing right. I could ever. Woe to you, O Earth and Sea, for the devil sends the beast with wrath because he knows the time is short. Let him who hath understanding reckon the number of the beast, for it is a human number. His number is 666. Dude. Remember how he said it? The words, and I remember, and then, da -na 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 -na. Oh, oh, man, it was so... It was oh, it's so an epic intro. I mean, amazing. That's dude. Th yeah. This is heavy metal at its finest, yeah. coming yeah, out yeah. polished, dialed in, and you know, a little eerie, a little dark, yep. a little. I mean, it's everything. And at the time, yeah, as a kid, you're going <laughs> exactly. This is exactly but, but, what I want. You know, to them, it wasn't. When you listen to them talk about it, and you listen to Bruce, there wasn't anything about it other than it was just cool today you know, just would today we'd call it good marketing yeah you know? <laughs> right <laughs> exactly like, yeah we're gonna put the parents this will hate it yeah. kids are gonna love it that's it and i mean and, think about it right rebellion this yeah. is that's what it was, it was and it was so great and it and this eddie so eddie the reason he's called eddie is because when iron maiden first started out they had this head it would basically sit in the background and some smoke would come out of its mouth or its eyes or something like that and and so it was the head and then they started calling it, because it's kind of that British Ed. It's his Ed, his Ed. Up in the, and then they called it Eddie. And that's where it came from, this skull. And then over time, he turned into this full-on character. Right. They would walk out on stage, and you know they'd have these massive versions of this right, thing. Right, he was right, on right. every over the cover. Years, yeah. so, he's, so he's become easily the most important, iconic character. You know, Once again, marketing almost. Right. You've got this Eddie, and you see him everywhere. 
you know, and all the album covers, t-shirts, so many different, so much art is based on this guy. So then in the back of the album cover, of course, there's Bruce Dickinson lighting the fire, you know, and I remember, I remember studying this over and over and over, and there's the, the scripture from the book of Revelations right there. And, and, you know, there's the band. And I remember, yeah, it was so, this was so overwhelming just looking at this. And this was part of the experience. I mean, I remember I had the record on this very one. So it wasn't just in general, it was this one. I'm, I'm 12 or 13 years old and I got the record on and I'm sitting here, you know, just studying, reading every word, every little no, thing in here. God, and then- it's intense, man. It's, it, it, it goes back to that whole experience as a kid. Yeah. The rebellion, the imagery. This is this so is a great. See what it was in. So inside here, there was nothing super interesting except I did like the the actual album itself. What they did on the the they had that kind of menacing Eddie character underneath the traffic light. I think the other side. Yeah, yeah it's all, that was so all cool. Eddie. That was I mean that was <laughs> was just so evil looking. I just loved it. And and I got to tell you, this is one of those albums. There isn't a stinker on it. This was straight from, through. from start to finish, every single album, to every single song, top shelf. Yeah. Every single one of them. Uh, I was in it, I played with some guys years ago and we actually figured out how to, what was the song we played? Anyway, we, we, were, we would play, it, this stuff was so good and trying to sing, as a singer, trying to sing his stuff, he's so good. You know, him, oh, Ronnie oh. James Dio, there's very few people that can do what these guys, what he did. Bruce Dickinson was just as yeah. good, as good as you get. So anyway, yeah, this Man, was a top-notch form. This is a classic on this album one. for sure. I wanted to say, you know, some of these albums and other people didn't know this, but they would put little, uh, you know, because these things were pressed. Yeah. They would put things, and sometimes there'd be these funny little smiley faces and things. I thought this one, I guess this one didn't have it. Oh, there's there it is. I think it says Wally right there, and it's it's handwritten. But they would sometimes you'd find these weird little things that that somebody yeah. in the plant probably just scratched something in, and then it became part of the record forever. The stamp. So anyway, number that's, the beast, man. This that's was a good one. This was this was one of the best. Oh oh oh! And then there was one other thing. Like an insert because this did this did come in here with it. They learned something from Kiss. Matter of fact, Kiss just like Rush, who we talked about before, took these guys on tour. And they learned a little bit of something because once again, every Kiss album, you'd break it open and you'd have something. Order the Belt Buckle and the Lunchbox and the this and that. And then they started doing the same thing here too. So this is this is the cover from the original album, Iron Maiden. Right. And then there's uh, there's Killers and then of course Number of the Beast. And so they had this little order form that you could send in and I still have the order form. Isn't that cool? I oh, didn't mail any, get it? I didn't, I didn't <laughs> order anything apparently. No, I didn't want it so. to have mom and dad like flipping out i know they were already struggling enough with this uh evil evil record anyway yeah you can't yeah, that's a good can't one, beat man. that that is that's one of the greatest of of all time yeah man it was so it was so good all right we're like getting steve grab a grab another record for us this one oh cool a little bit of a left turn, yeah this no, is a little this, different this is different but this is great this is this also from the 80s, one of the, was it the 80s when this came out? It was, it was I'm the 80s, it say, was the 80s. Yeah. It was one of the great pop, like top 40 albums of, of the era and maybe of ever. Of the era, yeah. No, In Excess Kick, man. I mean, they were on tour for like two years supporting this or something crazy. I took actually, I took my sister to her first concert was In Excess. Really? Um, took her there. Um, I think Ziggy Marley was opening up for him, if I remember right. Uh, anybody that's watching, if you were there or know that tour, you, I never saw them. So I, but Michael Hutchins was one uh, of my all-time favorite. All-time favorite frontman. He is up there. He's one of my top. Just he has the swagger, the look, showmanship. I mean, this is this guy's. He was top notch. You know. So they they. I remember the first time I heard them was this album. I think it was Shabu Shaba, and I bought that one, and it had the song "Don't Change." Right. I'm standing here on the ground. A oh, great, great song. But he, but if you ever watched the video, he had this very short hair. He looked kind of like Euro pop. And then they came out with the album, I think it was called The Swing. And he was kind of getting that cooler image back then, he was growing right. his hair out. And then when this came out, and I saw one of those first, uh, I want to say, what was the, it was, it was Need You Tonight. Yeah, that's I a, saw that video, that's Michael iconic. Hutchins in that video. I remember going, I mean, if there was man crush kind of stuff, 
I looked at that dude You're and I thought, crushing. I want to be that guy. He, the way he dances, the way he moves, that whole, that hair. Oh my gosh. All right, Steve, you he got this, so right? so cool. You got that? His man crushing. The man crush. Him, him uh, and Chris Cornell, and because uh, I'm a huge Chris Cornell fan, but these are a couple guys who just had the, the, the image. Oh, they, his they, his they image. They have the whole package, his image man. I mean, was so great. Look good, yeah. sing great, showman. Um, so you open it up all the way. Yeah. And they were a six piece too, which was interesting. They that were, was which kind was of a little odd. different. From Australia, because they right? Because yeah. they had a saxophone player. Yep. And I think it was. A couple brothers, right? I think. Yeah, there was a couple brothers of band. I think he was the sax player, he was the drummer. Of course, he's a guitar player. And I. Th- is that no, right? No, drummer, no, he's a drummer. He, he's the drummer. Yep. And. Yeah. I, I think I, these two are the brothers. Or maybe these two. Gal. I can't remember exactly yeah, what it is. Yeah, but they did but... have a couple brothers. And NXS Kick. And then that, so that was, so the great songs, Guns in the Sky. Great. Guns, such a great tune, great beat. Yeah, and then it goes into New Sensation, beat. which was great. Was New Sensation was so, so cool. So huge. New Sensation, New Sensation, right now. Oh my gosh, it was great. And then Devil Inside. That's Every on. single one of us, Devil Inside. Oh, jeez. Yeah. His voice, so cool. No, I mean you, you look at you listen to some of these tracks, all all of them. I mean, Devil Inside's been on I don't know countless movie soundtracks. Um, Th- then they go into Need You Tonight, which is my favorite yeah. NXS tune ever. But then what was interesting, if you ever see the video, it goes into this thing called Mediate, which was I believe a playoff of an old uh, Bob, Bob Dylan, Dylan video, right? where he just sits there, where Michael Hutchins just sits there and he's flipping the. The words, right? You know, and then the other band members come in, and then they just kind of stand there, and it was it was so cool. Yeah, that watching was that thing. And Ninja he's tonight, the, mediate not to video, hate, alleviate yeah. the suffocate when your own hate. I mean, you just go. It's classic. It was, it's it was all, so it, great. I mean, artistic, classic, awesome. Yeah. And then the inside of the album was pretty cool. Just interesting thing. Just that's it. And then of course, uh, Michael Hutchins. In his leather jacket. This was such an interesting inside cover. You know, just the simplic- simplicity of it, which goes along with the the whole simplicity of the thing. Let's look what was on the inside of this one. Okay, so we have uh, we have the band, and then I think yeah, what are these? These are all oh, the lyrics. lyrics. And then oh yeah, I remember this now. Looking at this, they had these just individual shots of each of the members, kind of their personality. And man, that was this was this was this was just cool. Everything about it, which was interesting for me because, and we talked a little bit about this a minute ago. We were in a break. Even though I start, I was a metalhead when I was a kid. I started. Well, you know what this, you know what the secret to all this stuff is. Girls like this stuff, <laughs> and so yeah. Um, so you better know Depeche Mode. You better know The Cure. You better know NXS because this was the girls didn't. Girls don't listen to Iron Maiden for gosh sakes. No, no. That, 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 That's uh... this is the stuff. So this is the stuff you buy and listen to this, if this you is that want to be able to talk to right? girls. Yeah. I mean, this is the stuff that <laughs> was on the radio. I mean, yeah. when it comes to pop band, in excess was yeah, you, you, top you know, of the them. charts. They were. And then, of course, he tragically time. died a long time ago now. It's been 20 years at least. Uh, yeah, that, that was sad. I mean, I remember yeah. where I was. When I heard that, yeah. News weirdly enough, so. I I remember the experience, and and it was because after this album, they 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 just kind of started disappearing. Yeah, they had that TV and, show where they had they were looking for like a new singer. Yes, that's um, right. That was that's actually right. pretty cool. That's um, right. I remember that, and I forgot. And that I watched that. that. Yeah, that was a definitely thing. I mean, uh, I I want to say the guitar player kind of had like a injury or some sort of accident and hurt his hand something like that um you know but yeah i mean you talk about somebody that dominated the world you know as far as a pop band yeah in the late 80s early 90s they really didn't get we bigger. were when, um, in the in when i was in high school and we had our band we were we played several of their tunes and we even some of the stuff we wrote were kind of in excess yeah. yes i mean yeah ish. because yeah no doubt. I mean, that they, they were the band that was still a band. Everybody played music. Everybody had an instrument, and at the same yeah. time, was on the radio and crushing it. Yeah. So. Yeah, they're awesome. 
All right, that was a good pick. That was a good pick, man. In excess. That's it. That was a classic, classic album. Okay, so we're gonna get Steve's gonna bring us one more over. What's that? Oh, cool. Yeah. Oh, I love this uh, this one. Yeah. 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 So you, fam how familiar are you with this album? I'm not super familiar. I do remember Sticks. Um, you know, too much time from my hand. You know. Yeah, that was yeah. on. That was actually on this album. Too much uh, time on my hands. Yeah. So this. This is a yeah. This is this is one of their uh, probably the thing about Sticks. I, I have most of their stuff, and they were one of those bands that, in my opinion, it, it, two songs I liked. It's my opinion is I liked two. I, I enjoyed two of their songs, and that's all I really liked on every album. And the rest right. of it was throwaway stuff. And this was so that so anyway I liked some of their songs a few but this was one of them that actually had more than two that were decent songs on it and this was a this was I don't know if this was really their first concept album but this is the one that led up to Kilroy was here and I, I think Kilroy was here was right after this one if I'm not mistaken and so you know Dennis DeYoung who was the piano player kind of the him and Tommy Shaw were the two main right. singers and Dennis DeYoung you, if you you know the song "Come Sail Away," he has that classic voice. Right. And if you recognize, if you remember the song "Come Sail Away," that's Dennis DeYoung. He had that very very unique voice. Of course, Tommy Shaw was actually the one that sang the one you just mentioned, "Too Much Time on My Hands," mm -hmm. and he was a guitar player. And he also had he had this amazing, crazy amazing voice. I love Tommy Shaw, and I actually used to prefer his singing to Dennis DeYoung. But Dennis DeYoung had this very intense artistic desire to make concept albums where everything kind of revolved around a theme. And this is the first time he really, really pushed it. You know, because they had other albums. If you look at all their stuff, like Pieces of Eight and Grand Illusion, uh, I mean, Equinox, these other things kind of had these, these, they were these thematic albums. But this is the one where they really had this opening part that kind of played through the album. I think the last track was a refrain of, from the first track, and it just kind of did this, was this whole piece. And it was about... The concept, as I kind of picked it apart, although it's not super clear, was just the the life of this theater that was called Paradise Theater, this fictional theater. And if you look at the album, and Steve mentioned this, if you open it up, you have the the grand premiere, the opening, premiere, and then the Close. as it deteriorated over the years. And they actually have lyrics that reference all of these things. So they, the the first song. Uh, the best of times kind of talks a little bit about yeah. this this idea of the passage of time and what things and then what's the yeah rock so it starts out AD 1928 that's the first song and then rock in the paradise which is this just killer track you know rock in the paradise do not and then and then as you go through this then too much time on my hands and then snowblind which was supposedly apparently this is actually sung by James Young, the guitar player, and he. This is apparently a song like everybody that ever wrote a song called Snowblind, which was more than these people, was about cocaine. And then you'd have Nothing Ever Goes as Planned, The Best of Times, which is kind of this looking back, and then it ends A.D. 1958. So this is once again this was this concept album right. of taking you through the life of this theater. I can't even so, remember when this came out. Like this was early '80s. I'm gonna I'm gonna guess '83, '82, somewhere in that neighborhood. Let's see if we can find it on here. Let's see if I can. But you know, I, I, I don't know about that. I mean, for me, again, just uh, the concept out. Like I was more like maybe my attention span back then. They didn't diagnose <laughs> anything like that. You know, I just. But definitely. 1980. Was two, so it's a little yeah. earlier than I thought. 1980. But I mean, Crazy. I didn't really get. I mean, this kind of stuff was beyond my. Like, I had friends that were into well, sticks and, you know, a couple songs. You're my lady. But, but, that. You know, if you were into hard rock in the 70s, there were some tunes like like uh, uh, Renegade. The gig is up, the news is out, right. they finally found me. And, and uh, what was it? There was a few other tunes that were these pretty hard rocking tunes that they put out. The. Welcome to the Grand Illusion. Come on in and see what's okay. happening. And then, of course, Come Open Sail Away. Remember the song Come Sail Away? Yeah. I'm sailing away. But then, ga, 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 that, that, that rocking thing. Come sail away. Come sail away. Come sail away with me. Anyway, I loved, I actually loved Sticks. 
two songs on every album. But this one was cool because once again, it was it was the they're tipping into this this thing, and then they went over the top. They put out I mean, obviously how, how they sold tons of. Oh, things. this was, I, I think mean, this one sold huge. a couple of million copies. It was it was really really big, and and the when they put out the next one, which was was Kilroy was here. What was it called? Was that the what the album was called? But it was the one that had the one that Mr. Roboto. And that was where right. they went over the top. They toured on that album, and they basically they put a still, play on. Yeah. And and where they used to have all these bikers that were into their music because it was kind of the '70s rock. Right. Now they show up and they're doing this play. And I remember if you listen to if you listen to them talk about it, um, they, they, they you know especially if you listen to Tommy Shaw, he he just is so embarrassed by that next album, and he's like he says we're up on stage like dressed in these as these characters and anyway so they actually had brothers in this band too and uh john and chuck i think that is that that I, i'm having a hard time reading that too so they were the they were brothers it was drummer bass player and then then here's dennis the young yeah of course he was not uh, oh no 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 he was originally in the band but tommy shaw wasn't tommy shaw joined after a couple yeah. albums uh james young great guitar player also sang every once in a while and then tommy shaw Tommy Shaw went on to do some solo stuff, and he actually, I think, sticks still still tours with him, but not Dennis Young's long yeah, gone. Yeah, they, you know, it's one of these like band feud. I own the rights. You yeah, do the, you know, it's some kind of BS like that. But what makes this album? Yeah, look at this. They did it. Act one, Act two, the players. You know, Dennis Young. Chris, anyway, that's the. They treated this like a like a play, which was was the idea here. Now, the thing. I love about this album, and every time I find this album in a record store, I buy it. I, I, I've owned probably six or seven copies of this album. Matter wow. of fact, I think last time I was in Denver, I found one. This might even be the one that I found in Denver last time. So why are you buying? I buy this one because it's a very, it's super unique. This is one of the most unique albums you will ever see for a reason. And I'm gonna show you if you didn't know this, because most people have never seen this before. When people come into the studio, I actually pull this album out frequently and show people this because it's kind of a cool, cool thing that that not many people ever did with records so here's side a and you'll see they have act one act two they have both sides listed on the front kind of like the iron maiden one where the back had that you know right. the, the just a the things. image all right so they listed all the tracks here then you flip it over and it's Explain. the black now why did they do this because they were setting the tone for spinal time <laughs> that's, what, that's what it was and I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but do you see it as I move it? It's like a dot. Do you see anything in here? No, I don't see it. It's my eyes. Oh, wait. No, there's like imagery Yeah. on the album. There is actual, <coughs> you have the, the gargoyles from the album going up around the side and then the word sticks etched. Do you see it now? Now that you say that, yes, I can see it. It's all etched into the album. So every copy you'll ever buy has that. At least I've never seen one that didn't have that. It's huh. all built, it's all pressed into the album. And I don't know how they do this, but every once in a while you'd find an album where they did this, where they put that it, it, it kind of almost like laser etching into the album itself where you can see the, and I don't know if that camera's picking up. If it's not, maybe I'll take another shot of it so people can see it. But it's the coolest thing. And once again, this is why every time I ever find this album, I purchase it because it's because of that. Because so. it's it's kind of a cool thing to show people. And, and actually, sometimes I'll give it away as gifts to people that right. are into this kind of thing. Because it, it, it is, it is a, it's, it's something that you can show. It could, not what's that? I was going to save it up because it might be worth more than Bitcoin or something. <laughs> <laughs> The one thing I know for sure is my record collection is not worth anything near. <laughs> it's so funny. I've, 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 it's like my my record collection, my entire record collection, and and a buck will get you a chicken sandwich at <laughs> at McDonald's, and that's yeah. about it. So, a couple of thousand of them, but still, it, as far as hobbies go, it's not a bad one to have, especially if you're into hoarding things. So, I want to see if this because this one had a bunch of interesting. Like writing in the side yeah, but that's, too. That's again. But I mean, anyway, it's one of those interesting things about records. I think we were talking about this before. Is the experience, right? Yeah. If you're a band and you're marketing, right? We we're talking about that as far as like before, right? With NXS and 
you know, the marketing of Iron Maiden earlier, the other album we looked at. I mean, how do you get people to be like, this is cool, this is unique? Because the physical property of holding music in your hand yeah. is, is non-existent today. Right. So people, I mean, think about the size of this, right? Right now, you don't even have physical merchandise. It, it's a totally different experience. So you open up the album, you see some, wait a minute, what is that in the yep, light? Yep, exactly. I just, I, no one ever told me it was there. It was one of those things where I'm playing it and I go, wait, whoa. And is it spinning? I'm looking at it going, wait, what's going on there? I mean, it, yeah, and it's you a discover. whole different. And then you yeah. tell people about it. Yeah, dude, you got to check this out. Oh, by the way, I got and six. And here I am in my 50s yeah. still. I got, <laughs> dude, six, dude, dude, got, got six in my garage, <laughs> you know. <laughs> that sounds so pathetic now that he put it that way. Wow, that's kind of embarrassing. No, nah, okay. dude, I mean, the thing is, is like you said, people <laughs> people have hobbies. I've got six in my <laughs> I have hobbies. I collect pennies or, you know, whatever you do. Yeah, that's really pathetic. I mean, there's a lot of worse hobbies. But I'm there, just maybe. saying. I don't know now. There's some cool. Yeah. There's some definite cool stuff. I mean, there, nostalgia. Uh, I want to say. Nostalgia is one of those feelings that I think is one of the strongest emotions that we can have. Oh yeah, you know. And so you turn around and you, and you and you music is put you in a place and a time. You know, you yeah. remember opening it up. I mean, I remember. You know, and it's not an album we have, but I remember getting Love Gun from Kiss. Oh yeah, bringing it home. And the imagery there is not exactly artsy or satanic it's more you know girls are half naked on the yeah, front exactly. you know, laying across laying the all bottom the ground around you yeah. know and you know that and it's uh, to me you know that was like oh that's cool i mean as a kid you're thinking eh, that's pretty cool you know <laughs> but uh on the other hand you know it's the imagery of the music and things and you had artists that were probably and marketing people that were in charge of all this stuff i mean it was a whole movement industry wise that how can we make it cooler you know i mean open it up to you know and then you figure out the production costs and stuff like that and i mean even with cds we were talking about that kind of off here and and some there were some kind of really cool stuff that people were doing with cds or remember colored vinyl uh, was mm -hmm. another big thing um i i, I don't think I ever saw like a red vinyl and you pulled something out one time in college and i was like what the hell is that a red record you know yeah how cool is that um you know i, I want to say i saw something with uh you know my the most modern thing i saw was something you know not to say i have daughters so i i saw katie perry and she had like i think her cd was called like prism or something like that dude that thing was marketed so cool had so many like trinkets and things and stuff it was it reminded me of and that's kind of my connection here reminded me of this kind of stuff like mm -hmm. well you have no idea this is coming out and yet you open up the cd and it's got you know it's opening up it's bigger it's got cool stuff it had i think it even smelled quite frankly like interesting i mean like we we're talking about that you open up an album when you first bought it and it had like that uniqueness it did. to it you yeah know? you could smell it you're um, feeling the tactile that's and, and then you all put the time and place and then you put the needle on and you're like flashback in time to when you first heard it um it's it's awesome stuff i mean it, and i think that's something our generation hope the people that are watching you know are, are like dude i get that you know and if you don't go buy an album <laughs> <laughs> you know at the place in vegas a record exchange in boise and you know experience it for the first time and it is and i guess you need a record player now and you need a record you know, player um but uh right i mean the thing is but you know i mean it is coming back i mean i want to say my daughter uh we were just at barnes and noble you were mentioning albums oh yeah out, that's right and they have a, a, an album section and you know she likes melanie martinez um and she saw like her album which was and she picked it out and was like, oh, my gosh. And so I'm like, that's kind of cool. Kind of drew me back to, you know, finding Love Gun, like I mentioned before. Yeah. And being like, this is the coolest thing. I think that's the first thing I bought with my own money, even though it was older and had been out for years. But, yeah, that, that went over like your folks. <laughs> what, what the hell is this? You know, they didn't disown me, so we're, I'm okay. We're fine. We're fine. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> yep. That's awesome. Well, thanks. That was good, man. That was a, this. Yeah, that's a cool one. 
Anyway, that was fun. Yeah, that so was a good time. Let's get audiomover.com and talk to you later. Thanks for watching. Thanks. Thanks.